Well, hello again, All Saints School. I hope you're keeping well. Just going to get the PowerPoint up. Thought we'd look at a, well, a rather small part of the Book of Acts, the book that comes after the four Gospels that tell the life of, of Jesus. And this little passage in Acts focuses on uh, an event which took place in a place called Joppa. Here we go. It's on the coast of Israel. Uh, these days it's known as Jaffa. It's, it's still there. And this event um, focuses on a lady, this lady dressed in green, who, well, her Jewish name is, was Tabitha. The Greeks called her Dorcas. Um, means about the same thing. Tabitha means gazelle in Jewish, in Hebrew, and Dorcas means gazelle in Greek. So I guess her parents, when they named her, hoped that she might be graceful and, uh, and oh, start again, Hugh, this is awful. Three, two, one. Well, hello again, All Saints School. I hope you're keeping well. We're going to look at a short passage from the book of Acts today. Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 42, which um, is the book immediately after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, that tell about the life of Jesus. And this um, little episode takes place in Joppa on the coast of Israel. These days, the town is known as Jaffa, but it's still there today. And um, it features this story, a lady, this lady in green. Her Jewish name was Tabitha, um, but she was also known by the Greek version of that name, which was Dorcas. Both Tabitha and Dorcas mean gazelle. So she was named for some reason after uh, an African antelope. And the Bible tells us that Dorcas was well known for her kindness and for helping those who were less well off than herself. Anyway, the Bible tells us that Dorcas fell ill and sadly she died. And the whole of the town were really devastated. They'd lost someone really special. And they heard that Peter, one of Jesus's disciples, um, was in the area. So they went off to find Peter. And sure enough, he's the one with the striped uh, headdress around his head. They, um, they found him and they said, please, please, can you come to our town of Joppa. There's somebody there who was really special to us and, and she's died. And Peter, sure enough, says, yeah, okay, I'll go with you. And so he comes to Joppa and all the people from the town meet him and they go, look, you know, this lady, this wonderful Dorcas, this is the dress that she made for me and here are the robes that she made for me. And so many people sort of begged Peter to help Dorcas and showed him things that she had made. So Dor uh, Sir Peter dismissed everybody and he prayed. He prayed for Dorcas. Prayed hard, and we don't know how long, but he certainly did some praying. And amazingly, she came back to life and could take her place back in the community. And I guess that story is in the book of Acts to celebrate that, hey, this, this was a miracle that happened. Somebody who everyone had, had felt was, was dead, had died, suddenly, through prayer, had come back to life. But we're looking at the subject of service at the moment, aren't we? And I guess we need to do a bit of detective work here, because what do we know about Dorcas? We don't know a lot. We know she lived in Joppa. We knew that she was regarded as someone who was kind and helpful and we know that lots of people showed Peter robes and dresses that she had made 
So maybe she was a good dressmaker. Maybe she used her skills to, to make dresses and robes and other clothes for those well off, as less well off than her. Or maybe she had a contact that was able to supply her with lots of cloth that she could make. We really don't know. All we do know is she used what she had, not just for her own good, but for the good of those around her. So as we think about service, you know, I, I can't sort of say, hey, I know what I'll do. I'll go and make dresses and robes and trousers and shirts for people. I can't do dressmaking and okay I might be able to go to the local haberdashers and get some some cloth but but I'm not sure it'd be a good idea to to let me loose sewing it together so what I've got to do I guess is is look at who I am where my skills lie and think how can I use them for other people and you may be thinking well Hugh I'm not sure I've got a great deal what could I do I, I don't dress make or anything like that well there's simple things that we can do. We can write a letter. We can pop it through someone's letterbox just to sort of say, we think you're wonderful. You're special. Little messages like that. If we're good at drawing, we could draw a picture for somebody. We can remember our pleases and thank yous and things like that. And as I was thinking about service, I was reminded of a film that I saw quite some time ago now, which I really like. A film called Pay It Forward. It's about this guy here who's a teacher. This is one of his pupils, and this is the pupil's mum. Anyway, approaching one school holiday, this teacher decides to set his class a challenge. Think of an act to change our world and put it into action. And the class all go away to have a think. And then the teacher invites them to present their ideas. And that little lad, the following day, goes up to the, to the chalkboard and this is what he does. He describes it as pay it forward. And he says, this is me. And what I am going to do is do three little acts of service to this person and this person and this person. And I'm going to tell them when they ask me why have I done this, that I want them to pay it forward. And so that person has to do it as act of service to three people. And that person has to do it to three people. And that person has to do it to three people. And the film is, is quite lovely because um, obviously he's just a little lad in a little class somewhere in America. And as he pays, as he does these three acts of service and then those three people do acts of service. So gradually they reach people that have got more resources, more wealthy, got other skills. And it, it sort of has this real big domino effect, this change to the community around them and I thought well I dare say we could all do three little acts of service and I did a little bit of maths here we go how many people are in your class well I'm, I'm not entirely sure because I'm talking to lots of different classes this morning aren't I but I would imagine roughly 30 so let's say there's 30 children in your class if they did three acts of kindness, little acts of service, that would be 90 acts. And then if those 90 people who had ha had some act of service done for them were invited to do three acts of service, that would be 270. And then if those 270 were invited to do an act of service to three people, 810, and then 2,430, and then 7,290, and then 21,870, and then 65,610. That's more people than live in Didcot would have a little act of service done, and it could spread across the country. 
interestingly, some people have taken up this idea. If you ever Google ARC, some of the things that come up are acts of random kindness. And they're little organizations in America, but also in the UK, encouraging people to do acts of random kindness. Or some people call them random acts of kindness, arcs or racks, it doesn't really matter. In fact, something I discovered when I was doing research for this assembly was that there is a random acts of kindness week set up by the School of Kindness, which is a, a British idea. In fact, it's, it's based in Reading. And unfortunately, we've missed it. It's the 14th, you see, to the 20th of February this year was the acts, Random Acts of Kindness Week. But hey, let's make Random Acts of Kindness Year. I've left the website on there so you can see because there's lots of ideas about little things that we can do to make this world a better place. So there's a challenge for us. It's very easy to say, oh, who am I? I can't do anything. There's lots of little things that we can do. Those little things that are inside us to act and behave and offer service to those around us. So let's pray. So dear God, we thank you for Dorcas. We don't know much about her Lord, but what we do know is that she was kind and generous to those in need. Help us to well, look at ourselves and think, right, well, what can we do? Let's focus on our abilities rather than the things we can't do. Just find those little opportunities to perform little acts of service to those around us so that we can play our part in making this world a better place. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And let's finish, as always, with the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So thank you very much for listening today. Let's see if we can find those little opportunities to serve those around us. And I'll see you again soon. God bless.